Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Thomas. And I'm Madison Wade. We continue our breaking news coverage tonight that we are following. The Sacramento County Coroner's Office has identified the victims and suspect in yesterday's church shooting in Sacramento in the Arden area. They are nine-year-old Samara Mora Gutierrez, 10-year-old Samantha Mora Gutierrez. Samantha would have turned 11 years old tomorrow, killed just two days shy of her birthday. The oldest sister, 13-year-old Samia Mora Gutierrez, also killed. 59-year-old Nathaniel Kong. All three girls were the daughters of the shooting suspect who police say killed himself. Kong was a family friend and was involved in that same church. And the father, take a look, has been identified as David Fidel Mora Rojas. Officials say he not only attended the church in Sacramento, but also lived there for some time. We are also learning the children killed were students of Natomas Unified School District. The district put out a statement today calling it an unspeakable tragedy. Bannon Creek School and Leroy Green Academy will be offering emotional support staff to their students, their families affected by this tragedy. We do know the father was estranged from his family. He was attending a supervised visit at the church. We've also learned the mother had a restraining order against him. Now we do have live team coverage tonight tracking the new developments in this story. ABC 10's Andy Judson got a hold of the restraining order. And first we start with ABC 10's Giacomo Luca live at the scene where this all happened. And Giacomo, this was not the shooter's first run in with the law. Well, Chris and Madison, we're learning tonight that aside from being forced to see his children by supervised visits, we know the father, also the suspect in this case, who's also dead, uh, he also was facing a series of legal troubles. We're learning tonight from the Sacramento Sheriff's Office. In fact, the man was actually living inside the church behind us and by all accounts appeared to be spiraling. The children's mother actually had a restraining order out against him, and he was also uh, recently arrested down in the Central Valley for DUI, assaulting a police officer and resisting arrest. That was just six days ago. Authorities have yet to suggest a motive, but this community that is uh, very shaken and wondering why a father would do something like this tonight. Even through tragedy, God is still God. This church member present on the grounds when shots rang out was not ready to speak about what happened, but wanted to share an important message. Even through a situation like this, in darkness, there's still light. One of love and forgiveness in the aftermath of an incident leaving many in Arden angry, frightened, and grieving. Uh, there were four and then one uh, uh, slight hesitation, then another one. Taken to the ground in fear, neighbor Sandy Davis counted five gunshots, hitting way too close to home. My sister was murdered due to domestic violence. I take it very offensive. A day after the tragic events, community members paying their respects, offering flowers, balloons, and other reminders of the innocent lives lost. Says our rest in heaven girls. They may not know the victims, but these 24-year-old twins know the powerful bond shared by sisters. It's really a tragedy and can't, uh, can't imagine like what the family is going through. And as a church, we're going to overcome this as a community. You're seeing right now a display of uh, balloons and those flowers that have been laid out by the community. I actually watched a couple of women that live right across the street actually very delicately arranging uh, everything that you see here behind us that's just been dropped off by a number of community members. This evening around 6 o'clock within the next hour or so, uh, folks that live in this neighborhood, it's nothing that's been arranged by the church, uh, but folks that live in this neighborhood and that are grieving tonight are are expected to meet here to host a candlelight vigil, uh, paying respects to the lives lost. A growing memorial outside the church where this tragedy happened. Our Giacomo Luca has been there all day. Giacomo, thank you. We're also learning more about the restraining order that was against the shooter in this case. David Mora had a restraining order against him requested by the mother of his children. ABC 10's investigative reporter Andy Judson has been digging through what's inside this order and has those details for us now. Yeah, I'm standing about 100 yards away from the courthouse door where this restraining order was first granted to show you how far away David Mora had to stay from his children and their mother. Now that is except for during supervised visits with his children, and that's when the shooting is believed to have occurred last night. On Monday night, a horrific tragedy. 
Three girls aged 9, 10, and 13 were shot and killed by their father during what officials believe was a supervised visit. The fourth victim, a 59-year-old man. The middle sibling's 11th birthday would have been Wednesday, just two days later. A nightmare for any parent, especially a mother who less than a year ago represented herself in court, requesting a domestic violence restraining order against the father of her children, David Mora. The order aimed to protect her as well as their three daughters by preventing Mora from a number of intimidating factors, including harassing, attacking, striking, threatening or contacting the mother and daughters. Records show the court said there was sufficient evidence to support and granted the restraining order against David Mora. Restraining orders that do not have a specific amount of time expire after three years. But this order, the court wrote in that it would not expire for five years until May of 2026. The restraining order also required Mora attend 16 group anger management sessions. Once he completed those, the court said he could refile to consider unsupervised visits. And now while Mora didn't have a criminal record here in Sacramento County, he did have a number of charges in Merced, including a DUI arrest, battery on a police officer resulting in injury, and a resisting arrest. Now he was booked in jail there just last week on February 23rd. Our Andy Judson reporting on the restraining order and just into our newsroom, Chris, we got additional documents to that restraining order. Yeah, and here is what some of it says. Keep in mind when we say responded, that stands for David Mora. Responded and I have been together for approximately 15 years. Responded suffers from mental illness, specifically psychosis. It also says he was recently hospitalized on a 5150 hold on April 17th, 2021 for expressing a desire to commit suicide. And then it says respondent has a history of being verbally and physically aggressive. That has been ongoing for the past 10 years. She says that she had moved out of the house with the children because she was afraid of respondent and concerned for the safety of herself and the safety of her children. For the latest updates on this horrible story and more, download our ABC 10 app. You can get need to know information in real time. It is free in the Google Play and the Apple Store.